That's right, boys and girls. Finally, we've got an electric Mini Cooper. I say finally for two reasons. First of all, it's been 12 years since BMW released a concept of the first electric Mini Cooper. So this has been a long time coming. And second, because in this quest to electrify the car industry, has there been anything more obvious than an electric Mini Cooper? I mean, it's, it's like truffle and fries or wearing a face mask. This isn't a contentious decision. This is obvious and it should have happened a long time ago. Now, I've been wanting an electric Mini for so many years that my expectations today for this car are through the roof. I want to love it. And our quest today is gonna to be nice and simple. I've got two questions. Is it any good? And should you buy one? First impressions as we start the trip on some windy back roads in Listerfield, it does have that typical go-kart style of handling. In fact, it's more go-kart-like than even the petrol Mini Cooper. Because you've got the battery on the floor of the car, you really do feel that the center of gravity is incredibly low. The steering feels sharp and pointy. You do get the feeling that if you lift off the throttle at any point, you can feel the back end twitching around. So it's potentially the purest expression of what we've come to love from Mini. The performance is a little bit underwhelming. We're looking at 7.3 seconds to 100 k's an hour, which is not that fast. And in fact, it's probably not as S-like as I would have hoped in a Cooper SE. The day we have planned is quite straightforward. We're starting here in Listerfield with some lovely back roads and we are driving all the way around into the city to charge the car in a more urban environment. And along the way, living with the car, we're gonna figure out if it is any good. But today is a little bit different and I don't wanna to get too hung up on this, but it's unusual. I can't stop thinking about it. You see, normally on a review like this, we get to plan the journey. We get to figure out where we're going, where we're driving and what we're doing with the car. But with the Mini, it's been a little bit different because BMW has planned this route and planned this journey for us. And they've been very specific about the car being driven on the back roads in an urban environment. And then we have to go and have lunch to plug in the car to charge it. And something about that seems quite unusual because it's not like if they hand you the keys to the new 8 series, they'd say, Ash, you have to go fill this up with petrol. They wouldn't really care, but we have to charge this car. And I can't help but feel that it's because the car only has about 230 kilometers of all electric range. I think BMW is making us do that to get out on the front foot of the fact that the range of this car might be quite poor. I know that everyone in the press world says that you really only drive 50 kilometers a day, so a 200 kilometer range is more than sufficient, but I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that 230 kilometers is enough. In fact, where we are at the moment, and partly because of my driving style, we've got 76% worth of range left, and it's saying we've got 103 kilometers to go. It feels like one of those mornings where you leave the house and your iPhone is on 80%. You just know that it's gonna go flat that day unless you give it a few minutes worth of charge at work. So my range anxiety is there. It exists. And I can't help but feel that if this car had a little bit more range, I wouldn't be talking about it. I honestly only am gonna get 120 kilometers worth of range to the entire battery. And that's really bad. At least the indicator bong is nice. Right, let's talk about the outside of the car, the exterior and the tells of what makes this different from the normal petrol powered Mini. The first thing I'll say, that name, they could have called this the Mini. -E but they've called it the Mini Cooper S 
E. They've thrown that S in there just to piss us off. The first thing you notice on the exterior are, of course, these wheels. And I have to say, it's triggering some kind of weird OCD anxiety within me where I'm just not used to seeing something that's asymmetrical. I didn't think you could do this. I thought a wheel had to be symmetrical for your rolling balance, but apparently you can, and I love the design. I probably wouldn't spec them on my own Mini. I'd probably go for a normal Cooper S wheel because I think part of the reason you have an electric Mini is so that it looks normal. Second big tell is with the front of the car. Now, all of the body panels are the same as your normal Mini. There's nothing structurally or architecturally different about the exterior of the car compared to a normal Mini, but you've got this funky looking grill at the front because of course there's no reason to cool the front of the car. That's where your, your motor is and your battery is under the floor. You've got your e-badge here. Around the side you've got little e-tails on the indicator, some funky orange electric wing mirrors. And then at the back, just a little e-badge. Apart from that, it's just one and a half tons of Mini Cooper. And that's exactly what this industry needs. For too long now we've been given cars like the i3 and the Nissan Leafs, which are all electric, but they also look electric, so that when you drive it, you're making a statement about how electric the car is. I love, and I think it's an industry milestone, that this just looks like a normal car. When you walk into the Mini dealer, you can just pick a Mini, pick the Cooper S, pick the petrol, pick the electric. The electric option is more like a spec than a statement. The boot, it's a normal Mini Cooper boot. You've got the same amount of luggage space as you would in a normal petrol Cooper. Under here as well, you've still got a bit of a floor where they've hidden all the charging gear because the battery, unlike in the i3 where they stick it in the back of the car, the battery is along the floor. So you don't have the compromise of space in the front or in the rear. But I don't quite know how they've managed to hide the battery so flush to the floor of the car because it doesn't even feel like you're sitting up high. It feels so normal you'd have to really question whether it's got an electric drivetrain at all. Let's look at the front. The bonnet. Got it. That is your electric motor. I don't really know what else to say about that. There it is. Don't know what any of that is, but as a man, I have to look at an engine and point to things. So there's your battery and there's a cable. I've broken that. Oh shit. So summary of things you need to know then. 233 kilometers worth of all electric range and you can charge the battery to 80% in just over half an hour. 0 to 100, 7.3 seconds. 135 kilowatts worth of power. $59,900 drive away. And that's really it. There's not too much more to talk about. It's not like the car has any innovative battery technology or autopilot features. This is just a regular base Mini Cooper that happens to be electric. And that's just what this industry needs. Let's get back on the road. for about an hour, hour and a half, and finally we're back in some more familiar territory here in Richmond, in some city streets to show off the city credentials of the Cooper SE. And from that drive, I have to say, wow, this drivetrain is so well refined. It feels solid, it feels balanced, it's smooth. This is the best electric car that I've driven in this price point. Remember, this is a $59,000 EV, so you're competing with cars like the Nissan Leaf and the Hyundai Ioniq, which feel cheap. This feels expensive. In fact, I'd say it's more like a Tesla Model 3 than any of its competitors. That's a big point. It feels like a BMW. A couple of other quirks I'm noticing on the interior. This whole nav system, which is obviously taken from the petrol cars, still has all of the petrol pumps showing by default on the navigation. It's almost like they've forgotten to switch that off, so it still thinks it's a petrol car. I love the heads-up display. I'm using this for all my navigation. And I'm enjoying this funky Speedo here, which has your speed in the middle and has your charging on the left and your battery on the right-hand side. That's quite modern and space-age. 
The gear lever looks like a Power Rangers leg. Apart from that, it's really just a fun little Mini Cooper. There's not too much more to say about the interior. Around city streets, I would like it to have a little bit more power. I'm still feeling like that S in the name is almost redundant. I want an extra one or two seconds to 100 k's an hour because it doesn't have the squirt ability, you can censor that word, that you might get in another electric car. We are here at our final destination. I think the charge is in here somewhere. Which means I get to do what every electric car owner spends a lot of their life doing, which is roaming around car parks trying to work out where the hell the charging point is. I think this is it, actually. I think this is our destination. That wasn't so hard after all. So the Mini is now charging. After all of today's driving, and we were driving quite a spirited way on some lovely roads, we have 38% of the battery remaining. So I have to take back some of my criticism early on. The battery performed a lot better today than I thought it would. The problem though is that the car still says when we get to 100%, I'm gonna have 164 kilometers worth of range. And granted, I don't have the lightest right foot in the world and we've been driving pretty enthusiastically, but real world, I just don't see how most people are gonna get far beyond 200 kilometers in their Cooper SEs. And it's a real sticking point for me. Yes, I know that most people don't drive 200 kilometers in a day. And yes, I know that this will suit most people's journeys 90% of the time without problem. But it's that 10% of journeys that I worry about. It still feels like I've left today with an iPhone that hasn't been fully charged and I'm watching the little batteries go down from green to yellow to red. I wish it had 300 kilometers worth of range. And you just know that the reason it doesn't is so that BMW and Mini could make a battery that was small enough to meet that wonderful $59,000 price tag. You know that the battery has been built to a price. So here's my ask. Here's my wish to BMW and to Mini. Give us the option. When you're specking your Mini Cooper SE, give us a little battery extension option that we can tick for $5,000 that does boost the battery to 300 kilometers. I would happily click that because whilst this battery is fine most of the time, I still think about those occasional times where I want a little bit more range. That's my only sticking point with the car. Apart from that, I'm really falling for the Cooper SE. In conclusion, this is the best Mini you can buy. It is the purest expression of four corner set wheels with pointy steering and go-kart-like handling. And I can't wait for the day when all Minis become electric. It's more Cooper than Cooper S. That S is misleading. It doesn't feel like a sports car. The battery will frustrate you one day, but not every day. But all things considered, the Mini Cooper SE is the milestone car that I've been waiting for because for the first time ever, you can walk into a dealer, see a car that you love and tick electric as an option and everything will be better for it. I don't think we've seen a car this groundbreaking since the original Mini because it makes an idea and a technology that is very different, so normal that your next car could be electric and you wouldn't even know.